Welcome to Quick to Stitch. We provide embroidery digitizing services, machine embroidery stock designs, and embroidered items available for sale. Thank you for joining us today at our Quick to Stitch video educational channel. Today we are doing a study of structured six panel hats. The study came about from the desire to understand why the Richardson brand 112 model hat is so difficult to embroider. I wanted to find out what makes this hat more difficult to work with compared to other structured six panel hats. There are many great brands of structured six panel hats. Today we're using four. The Buck Wholesale, a budget friendly alternative to the more expensive name brand hats, Port Authority, a Pacific Headwear, and of course the Richardson 112. Each hat will be stitched using this Brother 10 Needle home commercial machine. They will all use the same 40 weight thread, the same Filtech brand of bobbins, using the same 7511 sized sharp needles. The machine will run at the same speed for each hat and there will be no tension adjustments made during this study. This design file was created for this presentation. The text lettering at the bottom is a script type text measuring 5 millimeters. The center element is a mix of tatami and satin stitch types. The upper text is arched and includes a satin border. The design is path for hats to stitch from center out and from the bottom to the top. Just a reminder, our objective today is to try and understand why structured hats, specifically the Richardson 112, are so difficult to embroider. The first thing I did to understand these hats was to deconstruct them, to find out just how they are made and the materials used in their construction. Each hat includes the following elements. An upper fabric glued over a stiffener called buckram, a narrow plastic band at the bill seam for added support, and a bias tape fabric to cover all the raw edges at the seams. The first hat we're going to work with is the Buck Wholesale hat. Remember, this is our budget-friendly sample. The most important item I want you to see in this picture is the buckram. It is constructed using a fiber yarn woven with a plastic quote unquote yarn to create the stiffness in each hat. And because it plays such a large part in our study, I wanted to determine if there were any differences in this plastic yarn. And there are. In the Buck Wholesale hat, the plastic seems to be very soft compared to the other hats. I also noticed that it seems to be spaced further apart which encouraged me to count the what I'm referring to as ribs of plastic. I measured out 10 millimeters of buckram and counted the ribs. In this hat there are 10 ribs in a space of 10 millimeters. What follows now is an edited version of the stitch out of this hat. Each hat took 35 minutes to stitch and even after speeding up the playback of the videos they're each about six minutes long. So for this recording, I cut the samples of the stitch out with a focus on any areas that caused an issue, such as a needle break or a thread break. You will see that the buck wholesale that there are two thread breaks, both of them early in the recording, both of them in an area um, of the five millimeter script text. I don't believe it was the hat that caused these thread breaks. I do believe it was the script text. Even though your machine is capable of stitching small text, even smaller than the 5 millimeter size recommended for good stitch ability and legibility, I believe you get a better stitch out and better legibility on a hat if you use a larger lettering size. My preferred size is 7 millimeters. It not only stitches on a hat better, but it's also legible at a space that we now refer to as social distancing. And of course, a black font would be more visible than a narrow script font. And of course, you'll want to see the final stitch out. Yes, the small text is a bit hard to read, but overall the design stitched well on this hat. Our next hat is the Port Authority. Notice the buckram has a count of 13 plastic ribs and was rated very hard to my assessment. And unlike the other hat, whose ribs are round like thread, the Port Authority's ribs are flat. Again, I spliced together out samples of the stitch out from the sped up six minute video. What you'll notice here is there is not one stop. No thread breaks, no needle breaks. 
In fact, as hard and stiff as this hat is, it's stitched all the way through as you would expect it to. And the stitch out of the Port Authority. Again, the bottom text still small, still hard to read, but overall, this hat stitched very well. Our next hat is Pacific Headwear. This one has a rib count of 11 in a space of 10 millimeters, and the plastic is soft by comparison. This hat does have a thread break. It's toward the end, but more important than that, I want you to notice all the long tails, the long trims. I want to try to explain those. Remember I said at the beginning that the machine tensions were not adjusted at any time? And this was because it would change the natural outcome of the stitch out for each hat. Remember this for later. I watched a video recently that explained that the tails were the result of upper tension being off, that the upper tension was too loose, and that you could use the tails to help you adjust the tension by repeating the stitch element and turning the tension knob to reduce and eventually eliminate the tails. I want to take this thought a step further. I want to suggest that the hat or the project affects the tension as well that it may be necessary to take your machine whose attention is adjusted perfectly when you do your H test on a flat, that you may have to adjust the tension for the project you're working on. I want to suggest that if you're working on a production project that you use testing of similar fabrics, get extra hats, and fine tune the tension on your machine for that particular brand and model of hat. With our previous stitch outs, there were some tails showing. This hat, as you can see, it's pretty serious. And because no tension adjustment was made on the machine during this project, my only conclusion is that the hat affected the tension. If there's anyone here that has a different thought, please share it in the comments below or send me a message. I would appreciate any insights you have on this. And finally, the Richardson 112. Its rib count was 12 in a 10 millimeter space and the plastic is soft by comparison. Remember that this is the hat that put us on our quest for knowledge. And just like the other sped up versions of the stitch out, it was previously six minutes long. And because there were no issues, no thread breaks, no needle breaks, this last video is gonna be a bit repetitive. Just another hat stitching on a machine pasted into a video. We're going to skip ahead to the end and show you the stitch out. And here you are, the Richardson 112 stitching start to finish with no issues. I still don't care for that small 5 millimeter text on the hat. So what have we learned? Let's look at those other numbers. With each hat, I used a dial caliper that does exceedingly small measurements. I measured the fabric, the center seam, I measured the buckram and counted the ribs. I also measured the bill band, but I crossed those results out because they didn't affect our stitch area. The biggest takeaway I got from this comparison was between our budget hat, the Buck Wholesale and our Richardson 112. Overall they could be the same hat. If you can stitch the budget hat like a Buck Wholesale with no issues, you can also stitch a Richardson 112. If you can stitch a Port Authority or a Pacific Headwear or any of those other great six panel structured hats with no issues, you can stitch a Richardson 112. Don't let the horror stories you hear about the 112, you know, that it's being, that it's impossible to stitch. Don't let that get stuck in your head. We all know now that it is not the hat. So what is it? Well, I have some thoughts on that. Look for the next video. I'm going to call it the anatomy of the hat hoop and how it works. Thanks for spending your time with me today. Let me know if you have any thoughts you want to share, any ideas. Just leave a comment below or send me a message. Thanks.